There's more than a few business owners that believe that the economy is going to tank, and I have to count myself as in that group of people that believe that we're going to be in for some pretty difficult economic times ahead. And as a business owner, it's important that I look at all aspects of my business and adapt to it as the markets change. For instance, whenever our local geographic region tripled the number of septic companies that it had, we had to refocus part of our business to drinking water wells. And as more and more home inspectors expand out the services that they offer, encroaching on the services that we offer, we have to pivot again and move towards more repair work and service work. And all of that is fine. It is the responsibility of the business owner to pivot his business and to adapt, to stay relevant in the market and continue to get market share. And the thing is, if I don't keep up with what the market's doing and pivot at the right times, it's not just me that that hurts. If the business is negatively impacted, it means that employees lose their jobs, families don't have incomes. That's a lot of responsibility and a lot of weight on business owners' shoulders all the time. So each day I make sure that I spend a certain amount of time doing marketing and market research to stay ahead of the curve. So while I was doing this research, I stumbled upon a company that said they had the best customer intelligence software on the market and that their software would arm my office staff and technicians with the information they needed to maximize sales and profits. Now on this company's website, they said if I wanted more information, I just needed to set up a free demo and a regional sales rep would get in touch with me. So I set up a time. So about a week and a half later, when the magical day and time arrives, I'm scrambling through my email, trying to find the Microsoft Teams or the Zoom or the Google Meet invite so that I can join whatever web conference it is. And I don't have one of those links. And I'm kind of panicking because I don't want to be late to this presentation. This sounds like some pretty awesome software. And while I'm going through my emails and asking my secretary where it's at, there's a knock at the office door. And in walks a gentleman in a business suit. Come to find out, it wasn't an online meeting, it was an in-person meeting. And that was a little weird because I'd never entered my company address. But hey, that's fine, I'm old fashioned, let's sit down and talk. Now the sales rep explained that this mystical, magical software would not only arm my office staff with all the information that they needed about potential customers, but through an app would also help out the field staff know exactly what's going on. On the office side, it would integrate with the phone system and the CRM so that whenever the people that answer the phone answered the phone, it would show all the relevant data about our customers. And when the field technicians rolled up to the house, they could open the app and see all the information that was publicly available about the homeowner and who lived there. And this sales rep explained for the low, low price of $1,749 a month, I could have access to this system. So I asked the obvious question, what is this software gonna tell me about my customers and how can I use it to make more money? And this is where things got a little scary. The list of information that it will tell you about a customer is too long for me to remember. So I got a list here so I can read it. First off, it'll let you know their names, their addresses, their phone numbers, who their wireless carrier is, what internet provider they have, the total annual income broken down by the residents of the house, what percentage of that income was considered disposable income, their credit score, give or take a few points, their property tax values, the status of their mortgage, you know, whether it's in foreclosure or pre-foreclosure, the total estimated amount of equity that they have in their house, whether or not they have access to a home equity line of credit. And he said that was important because you would know if they could afford large repairs like replacing entire systems of their house. He also said it covered court records. And he said that was important because you could tell if either A, they had sued previous contractors or B, if their house was in foreclosure or pre-foreclosure. He said it would also let me know the political affiliation of every member of the household, whether or not they were likely voters and what religion they were and whether or not they were active in that religion. Now, if this doesn't worry you just a little bit, then maybe you're not paying attention. Now, while most people know data collection like this happens, most people don't understand the extent of the data collection and how accurate that that data is about you. Now, I wasn't really surprised by this because I knew that systems and software like this existed. Now, years and years ago, I got a job selling alarm systems door to door for ADT. 
and they had a software pretty much like this and it did help with selling alarm systems because the more information the salesman has about the customer whenever he cold knocks on their door the easier that sale is going to go but then after he got really good at selling alarm systems with ADT another company magically found me and that company was Vivint out of Utah and they offered me a much better paying job selling a better alarm system than ADT. And their customer intelligence software was far superior to anything I'd ever seen. Pretty much every door I knocked on, it was 100% accurate, and it was basically including all the information that this software was. And it made selling alarm systems really easy almost to the point that you could take advantage of the customer. And if you don't think that you as a homeowner are at a distinct disadvantage to a well-informed door-to-door -door salesman, you are mistaken. Now, because I knew systems like this existed, once I was done working for the alarm companies, I kind of took some advice on board and organized and structured my life and my personal information in such a way that it'd be really difficult for companies like this to capitalize on me. But all this being said, everybody in the office was now totally enthralled in this software. And this raises the question that most people would ask at this point, which is where does all this information come from? How do they get it? And how did it get on this app? And sure, you could give all the cliche answers of Google's listening to everything you're saying or Amazon Alexa or Facebook is stealing your information. And yeah, they are the snoops that do that, but it's really, they're just the people that collect the data. How did it get on this app? And the answer to that question is data brokers. Data brokers will buy this information from all of the suppliers and then they'll culminate it and aggregate it and refine it down into these softwares. And then those companies try to sell that software to me and a whole bunch of the other home service providers in the neighborhood. At this point, I'd like to point out kind of an irony of the situation. First off, the companies steal your information and it gets sold multiple times and it's your information and you never make any money off of it. And then the people that they're selling the information to are just gonna annoy you with that information or put you at a disadvantage when you're dealing with a home repairman. And let's face it, there's a lot of people that would be at a significant disadvantage. So look at it like this. If you need your heating and air conditioning system replaced and the salesman knows that you have $20,000 available through a home equity line of credit, he knows he can price a $12,000 system at $16,000, dollars $19,000 because you've got the money. And remember, most customers don't price shop. So I'm sitting here in this meeting and I'm thinking several things to myself. Like one, do I really need this software? Two, is it ethical? Three, damn, the price is pretty high. And four, I'm not really sure operating within this software is within the confines of what I want to do within my business. So I'm sitting here in this meeting, getting this presentation of this software, and I'm thinking to myself, is this even ethical? Do I even want this software? What is the potential for this data to be abused? What happens if an employee looks up an ex-girlfriend or a client that they shouldn't be looking up? What's the liability associated with it? And I'm not really sure I want the software. So in the middle of this presentation, one of my employees in the office pipes up and says, hey, why don't you look me up in it and see what it says? So they look him up and all the information is correct. They've got his address, his phone number, his wireless carrier, his internet provider, his religion, political party, who he voted for, everything. It's all right. There's only like a couple of blank spots. And then another employee is like, wow, that's really cool. Look me up. And again, all the information is correct. So I'm sitting back, listening, watching, and I think to myself, okay, playtime's over. It's time to screw this salesman. Go ahead and look me up. Now, if you follow me on TikTok or you've been around on YouTube for a while, you know there's some certain aspects of my life that's gonna trip up this guy's system. And on top of that, I really have engineered my life in such a way that my personal data isn't out there that much. So I ask him some questions. What's my address? Now, sure, he knows the business address. That's public freaking record. But what's the address where I actually put my head on my pillow at night every night? And I know he's not going to find it because I've never written it on any document anywhere. Guess what? He got it wrong. So then I ask him, what's my wife's name? And he's looking at the computer screen, looking up. And he goes, that's weird. Um, I've got Heather, but with two last names. Those must be their maiden names. Wrong again, kiddo. And then he scrolls to another page. He's like, well, I, I actually have another address for your spouse. 
I was like, really? You've got me listed as three spouses? He goes, yeah, that can't be right. I was like, weird. So then I asked him, all right, what religion am I? He looks at the screen and flips back and forth. And he says, oh, that's got to be wrong. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, nah, it's probably right. But this tells me a couple things about you. Either A, you don't have confidence in the software that you're selling, or B, you're uncomfortable mentioning that religion. Either way, now I know something about you. But hey, if he's not going to tell me, I'm not going to tell him, right? I ask what political party I am. He gets that wrong. And then I ask him what it says my income is. He looks at the number and says, that's got to be wrong too. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, no, it's probably right. So we go through every single data point in his software, and I'd say three out of four of them about me are either blank or wrong. So why is it that this software is so incredibly accurate about my employees and so incredibly inaccurate about me? And the answer to that question is because I've set my life up in such a way that it's very difficult for these data collection companies to get information about me or keep information about me. Now, one of the reasons that's the case is because I realize that if somebody has to ask me about me, that means they don't have the information already and I can lie. I can just make up that information and then that sends bogus information into these data companies. Now, for the next way that I protect myself, I have to give a little bit of credit to the federal government. And I know that sounds weird saying that the federal government helped me protect my personal data, but they did. And I'm sure it was a complete mistake, but the State Department came up with an idea of having a passport card. Now, that passport card is unique from a driver's license because it doesn't have a lot of your identifying information on the front of it. So whenever you go someplace and they ask you for a state-issued photo ID, you and I both know they're expecting a driver's license and you may be tempted to give them a driver's license, but don't. Give them your passport card. Because when you give them your driver's license, they scan it, copy it, get the barcode off the back, and that gives them a ton of information about you. And God knows where that information goes once they have it. The passport card doesn't have a lot of that information. And sure, sometimes they'll look at you and go, no, we'd like your driver's license. And to that, I just look at them and say, I don't have one. I mean, what the hell are they gonna say to that? Are they gonna call me a liar? They want my money and they want my business they'll deal with the passport card. So as I'm sitting here watching this entire demo that he's doing and seeing what this product does, there's a lot of things buzzing around in my head and I've pretty much made up my mind that I don't wanna know the religion of my customers or how they voted or how much money they have available. That strikes me as none of my business. I certainly don't wanna know about their credit score. It's probably just gonna make me feel bad about my credit score. How about if we just keep doing business the old fashioned way? I give you a price, you tell me if you want me to fix it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, let's get your plumbing fixed. Now, whenever I told the salesman that I didn't really want to buy his Creeper software to spy on my customers, he was genuinely shocked. And what he did is take that opportunity to explain to me the huge disadvantage that I would have and that he, as the regional sales rep, knew all the companies that he had sold it to and everybody was buying it, and I would be at a distinct disadvantage, especially against the national sales companies that have this program integrated into their core systems. So what is this, peer pressure sales? Like, he's literally telling me, well, everybody else is doing it, you should too. I mean, that sounds a lot like high school, and I didn't have a good time there. So I told him again, I'm not gonna be buying this. And then he says, well, if you sign up for it now, I can give it to you at half price. Well, wait. Were you gouging me before, but now you're giving me the real price? Like, you sensed I wasn't a sucker, so you've lowered the price. That's almost like corporate begging. Like, please, please take it. No, why don't you have some confidence in the value of your system and just walk out the door? And I explained, I don't do business with businesses that do business like you're doing business. Sorry. Now listen, I sold door-to-door -door alarm systems for years and I got the door slammed in my face 99 times out of 100. It is okay to lose a sale. It's just part of the game. But this guy immediately had a bad attitude and left the office and on his way out, slammed the door. So what, we're children now? Now listen, services like this salesman were trying to sell me are a function of reality in today's modern world. If you're using a larger heating, air conditioning, ventilation company, plumbing company, national service company, door-to-door -door salesman, whatever, you need to understand that they're armed with these pieces of software and they know information about your personal life and financial life 
and that gives them a distinct advantage whenever they're making a sale to you. So please tell me in the comments, do you agree with companies having software like this? Because these softwares are becoming the norm. More and more companies are having these types of databases integrated into their core operating systems. So whenever somebody comes to your house to sell you anything, whether it's a new air conditioning system or a roof or a plumbing system or water filtration, they have this information. How do you feel about that? Does it bother you? Do you feel like you're at a disadvantage? Are you comfortable with them having a pretty good idea of your financial situation before they knock on the door? Now, I take steps to protect my personal identity because I've made the decision to be on social media and throw so much of myself out there that it would be super easy to mess with me. But my question for you guys is, is how many of you actually take proactive steps to protect your information or do you not care about it? Are you just like, hey, it's gonna happen, whatever, I'm moving on. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video and as always, I enjoyed making it for you. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. The best way to support the channel is to hit the like and subscribe button. Y'all have a great day.